Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to tell you everything I know about the IRA decal node. And that's a very exciting thing that we can use inside Dash Studio in order to put a logo on a t-shirt or to put a tattoo on a character without having to go outside of Dash Studio and mess with textures. So traditionally, if you wanted to do something like that, then you would have to find whatever texture file is being used on the object that you want to change. Then you have to go into something like Photoshop or GIMP and then add the change that you want to make onto that texture bring that texture back into Dash Studio and kind of hope it works. If the logo is too big or too small, you want to make a change, you have to literally go back to the texture and repeat that process. So it's kind of, it's cumbersome to do that. And the IRA decal node lets us do this much more easily. The one important thing to understand is that this is an IRA feature. So it's kind of an NVIDIA IRA feature rather than a Dash Studio feature. So even though it's available inside Dash Studio and we can we can set this up inside Dash Studio. It's not actually made by Dash, so it's part of the iRay render engine. So other programs that use the iRay render engine or derivatives thereof do also have that feature. Let's have a look how this works. To First of all, where do we find it? It's up here under Create New iRay Decal Node. And we're going to set this up in a moment, but I think to begin with, I'm just going to go and make myself a new primitive here. And that'll be just a cube primitive. Uh, cube, maybe this one, uh, one meter is just fine. There he is. Kind of default cube in Dash Studio. Kind of cool. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> awesome. I believe you have your own channel. Very cool. Anyway, now we'll go over and create a new iRay decal node and it comes up with a little uh, menu option and you can rename it something but I'm going to leave the defaults including the last option that says parent to selected item and that just means that in the node hierarchy it'll go and come up as a thing that is already parented to my cube object up here. And that's just fine because usually a decal node kind of belongs to one object rather than every object in the scene. You probably want this parented to one object. So with this selected, I can now see that really there's nothing to see in the viewport. And uh, that's that's fine. We're going to get to that in a moment. So first of all, uh, you have a new manipulator gadget here that is, I mean, it's, it is the same one, but just to, to uh, prove a point, there are these two things are uh, movable independently from one another. And I'm just going to drag out that decal node here into the Z axis. So uh, into just um, Z is kind of an important thing. The blue axis in Dash Studio is an important thing for for the decal node because that's kind of the front facing thing. I'll just drag that out. By default, it was right in the center of the cube. I'll just drag that out a minute. So we have under the parameters tab, we have a new option here, which is decal. So there's the regular uh, general uh, transform options here, but this the one new option is decal. And there's a ton of options here. You can whittle those down. And we're going to speak about a few of them. I don't know really much about them all, but uh, the good thing is we don't really have to touch most of them. What, where the real power is happening is in fact in the surfaces tab of Dash Studio. So with the decal node selected, if you head over to the surfaces tab, you see that the decal node has in fact two material zones set up front and reverse. That's like from the front and from the backside. And each of them, if you open them, you have the full basic iRay shader or the iRay Uber shader that you can mess with. So this is different to the one that I have set up on the cube. So the cube itself also has a material zone here, which is called default, and it has its own material. So there's not much going on on the cube there right now. I might just I might just give it a little different color. So let me just go under uh, diffuse here and just make the color, I don't know, turn it into something blue. Let's have a blue default cube. So it's a good blue. I can't tell. Maybe uh, Maybe this is better blue. There, better blue, much better. Okay, <laughs> so the cube now has a color, but the iRay decal node, if I go and switch over to that again, and then uh, have a look at its base material, that hasn't changed. So it's important to know that they're independent from one another, which is kind of cool. This is where the power comes in. Now, um, I can specify either a color or even better, let's in fact, let's do that. Let's put, let's give it a texture with this little icon here on the base tab. We'll go and browse for, let's just say my logo. This is a PNG image. 
of my logo that's kind of got a transparent background and just an opaque foreground of my logo let me go and open that and we see nothing that's not good is it what kind of a scam is this it's not actually it's um what's happening here is that we can't see the result of the iray decal node unless we are in fact in the iray viewport so as i said it's an iray feature hence it is not available in 3d light nor in the opengl preview that we have here right now so let's go and switch this over to the iray shaded viewport and let's see what happens we still can't see anything oh, so terrible let me go and select my iray decal node and so the way this works is now if you imagine a projector a slide projector that you're holding against a wall then that slide will if the wall is flat and you're holding it in a 90 degree angle against the wall it'll project a picture onto the wall and this is how the iray decal node projection works as well so if i go and grab my uh, my z manipulator and move that further into the cube eventually we will see that the logo will appear on my cube it doesn't do that all the time so there appears to be like a zone there so i can drag it to a particular point and then my logo appears if i drag it further i can do that but then if i go beyond that it just goes and disappears again so it's almost like it's a it's a an object with thickness and you can scale the z-axis of the decal node and then make that zone uh, thicker or thinner again you can also make the whole thing bigger so if i go and uh, scale the whole node up with the white thing then my whole logo gets bigger just gets plastered onto the side of the cube here which is awesome so that's how that works um one thing that you might notice is that hey i said it was a transparent logo why is there a black background on this we'll come to that in a moment there's a way to make this transparent just like you would with any other material that needs transparency ira doesn't really handle the transparent value in the png image another thing to note is that on the back of the cube there's nothing happening which is which is kind of good but it really depends on the situation what you need if i'd make my uh, node big enough or the z scaling of my node big enough then eventually it uh, would in fact appear there i'm just going to make that massive just to show you this there is a way to make this appear both on the back and the front or just on the front it'll become more clear if we look at an item of clothing there in a moment but um, for now let's deal with the transparency issue here so just like on another on a regular iray material under the geometry tab here we can specify a cutout geometry value that's on the cutout um, thing here so under the material under cutout if i close this down again uh, under geometry under cutout you can specify an opacity map or a transparency map whatever you want to call it and i have already made one I'll show you in a moment also how to make one yourself in Photoshop, and that's this one here. So the black parts on the image, on the transparency map, are going to be transparent, and the white parts are going to be opaque. So this is actual black in the JPEG image of the opacity map, whereas this is just rendered black in my Windows Explorer. This is actually transparent. So if I go and apply this onto the cutout channel, I can see that my logo becomes completely transparent which is awesome so that is how i can put that logo with the decal node onto my object i can also go and blend this down a little bit so this is the whole opacity of the whole uh, decal node if i go crank that down to zero it's invisible one means it's 100 uh, percent opaque whatever is left and anything beyond that is kind of just blending in a bit so maybe like, you know 0.9 might be a good idea so it it just appears a little bit blended in there if I wanted to change the placement of my logo, all I need to do really is to move it up or down, left or right, make it bigger or smaller. And, you know, that is, that's kind of how that works. So this is how logo placement on an existing item of clothing is extremely simple and easy. Watch what happens though as I go to the top with my logo. Look at the top of what, what happens with my logo and also look at the top of what happens with my cube. That is uh, interesting also kind of a cool effect so this is really the projection 
in action. This is this is what would happen if you were to project your your metaphysical slide projector onto a wall that's only got a half height so that the top of the wall would still catch the light that you're projecting over it and it would kind of still catch a bit of the image that you're projecting depending on the angle of course that you're projecting it from. So yes, that is one thing to note. Also, one other thing to note is that if you, with the IRA decal node selected back on the parameters tab, there's all kinds of things that you can that you can do here about the clipping and the projection itself. So I know not a lot about this, but it's it's a little bit like how other things are, how textures are projected onto a 3D object. So you've got the projection type here, uh, that's planar, cubic, cylindrical, spherical, and so forth, and depending on the type of object that you want to um, shine this this uh, decal node onto you may have to change that for me planar and cubic work quite well or cylindrical that's the other thing that i could recommend spherical i don't know i don't really project things onto spheres that much but you know it's, it's just one of those things i thought i'd mention it so another thing while we're on this tab let me go and bring this down again is that there is on the when I turn around uh, my cube around here on the uh, on the top thing here on the general there's face mode and that is kind of interesting so you can make sure that projection is happening only from the front or is also happening on the back faces of your objects if I go and uh, put that on the back see if we can see something yeah there we go now you can see that my that I've made my um, my, my decal zone thick enough to encompass the whole object then I can actually see that my logo appears on the back and it no longer appears, appears on the front. That is kind of interesting. It's also um, the other way around so it's mirror image that's cool. Or we can also use uh, both faces so if I wanted to have front and back then if I change that to this then uh, my logo appears on both sides of the cube. And that's kind of cool. It really depends on the situation, what you need. Great, so those are the basics of the decal node. Let's do something useful with it. And in fact, um, go back to my, uh, to my regular viewport. Let me go and delete the cube and bring in perhaps an item of clothing. I could dress up a whole character. I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll just go and use this here, the casual heat outfit. I'm sure that comes with a shirt, yeah shirt is nice and we'll just we'll just have a look at this at this shirt here and try and project pretty much the same logo onto the shirt and do the same process from uh, from the top but this time with something more you know usable <laughs> so once again with the shirt selected i'll head over here and create myself a new iray decal note which will be by default parented to the item of clothing it's kind of awesome that's exactly what i want with that IRA decal node still selected, I might just leave that in position right now. It's at the very bottom here, together with the root node of the shirt, which is of course not with the shirt, it's kind of at the bottom somewhere. With the decal node selected, I'll head over to the surfaces tab and on the uh, base tab of the front, so it has two materials, on one for the front, one for the back, if you ever need a different logo on the reverse. Uh, on, the, on the base, on the base color, I'll go and pick my logo, which is no longer in here. So I'll go and browse that, which is this one, WP Guru logo transparent. And um, since we're already familiar with the cutout opacity, I'm going to go and uh, navigate there right away and apply that transparency map as well. Uh, don't worry, I will still show you how to make that in Photoshop in a moment. So with those two things on there, I'll go and switch over to my iRay shaded viewport and I'll find myself uh, the correct placement for my node. So right now, all I need to do is drag this up so that it somehow appears on my item of clothing. If it doesn't do that, if you're sure you've set everything up and if you're sure you're in the iRay viewport and the thing still doesn't come up, have a look uh, where exactly that decal node is. So it should appear somewhere around the manipulator. And you can see that uh, on an item of clothing, on something that is kind of open, you can see how this works, that actually my logo is being projected um, through the first surface and ends up also on the second surface and that is because of the thickness of my IRA node so if I'm if, of the decal node if I go and make that thinner then it wouldn't reach 
the back face of the t-shirt here. I can either do that, make that thinner, or I can just go and drag this out until it no longer reaches the back face, like so, because I don't really need to have that projected on the inside of the, of the shirt. So either way will work fine. I'm just going to go and drag that to about here. And the other thing that I've kind of noticed is that the logo is a little bit too big for the t-shirt. In fact, it's too big to even fit on the t-shirt. So I'll go and make my whole node a bit smaller here and that'll also shrink the logo. There we go. That's that. I appear to have clipped off a little bit of the U here. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I really don't know. Couldn't tell you. Maybe it's a logo thing. I don't know. Anyway, cut out opacity gets gets pulled down a little bit. Uh, if we don't do that, we uh, we we literally see the decal material at a hundred percent, and it won't blend in with the material underneath it. It's literally like it's sitting on the outside layer, if you will. So if I drag that to literally one at a hundred percent, we don't see anything underneath it. So I think for this logo. To appear on the t-shirt properly, I will just go and drag that down to 0 0.9, 0 0.85 or something like that. And at that point, I will see the, the little knitted bits and pieces in the shirt there. Or I can even make it smaller. If I, if I think, hey, that's still too big, I can still make it smaller. Oh, I see what's happening. As I make that smaller, I've probably pushed my node out too far. So it now just kind of grazes the outside of the curved surface there. I think that is why I'm cutting off the outsides of the logo. Let me let me see if my theory is correct. I'll just push the logo a little bit further back in. And yes, there we go. So now we're basically, our projection is hitting the outsides of the shirt. That's kind of what I want. There we go. Now, transparency map, and how do we get there from something that already has transparency, like a transparent PNG image? How do we get there? How do we make this happen? Well, I only know how to make this happen in Photoshop, uh, which is here. This is my transparent logo. You can tell by the little checkerboards on the outside that that's transparency. And in order to convert this into an opacity slash transparency map that'll work in Das Studio, I need to do two things. One is I need to replace anything that's transparent with black, and I need to convert the logo to white. And it's fairly easy to do that in Photoshop. If I head over to um, with, with, with this being a transparent layer, I'm going to go and create a solid background color. And I will just make that black. That's great. That black needs to be, of course, behind our logo. So I'm going to go drag that underneath it. And there we go. And now we have transparent background being filled with blackness. That is cool. So that's item number one. Number two, anything that is opaque in my logo needs to be turned white. And we can do that in Photoshop with a color overlay. So I'll go and right click on my layer. I'll go and head over to blending options. And that'll give me this. Uh, might that be better? Uh, better suited somewhere uh, somewhere here there we go and with my uh, blending options open I'm going to go over to color overlay which is this thing here I'll tick that I'll enable that and uh, if I select this item here maybe I'll go and switch it put it over here so we can actually all see it there we go I need to pick a white so this is the color that you'll that you'll pick uh, white is always a good idea, so pick white and also make sure that the opacity is at 100% so that the color literally gets overlaid 100% over whatever is the contents of that layer. And that is your opacity map slash transparency map. That can now be saved out as a JPEG image, so we don't need any transparency values in there because that is what the IRA engine will understand under the hood. And that's it. I hope this was helpful in creating exciting logos and tattoos for your characters and your projects. It's also good for laying out decals onto street signs or putting graffiti on walls and a funky stonemason set. That is what you can do with IRA decal notes in Das Studio or any other IRA enabled application. I hope this was helpful. If you liked this video, then please share it with friends, family and total strangers and other 3D enthusiasts. If you'd like to support me and say thank you, drop something in my tip jar. There's several links in the description of this video. There's Ko-fi for one-off donations or Patreon for monthly donations. You can also buy stuff from Amazon via my affiliate links that will always support me and I'm always eternally grateful for that. You can also 
immortalize yourself in any of these funky credits that are currently rolling. My friends, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.